Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. There's been a major spotlight shown on artificial intelligence over the past few years, and now it's time to find out where its role is in the world of healthcare. Rokas has your spotlight on that. Inside your spotlight this morning, Artificial Intelligence Conference in Healthcare is happening tomorrow. The theme, Catalyzing Change, exploring the transformative impact of AI on patient care. This morning, we chat with Dr. Shavin D. Gopal, Head of Public Health and the Director of U University Services at the NCRHA, as well as Leslie Lifouk, the Director of AI and Analytics in Cust Services. Good morning, gentlemen. Good Welcome morning. To morning, morning, morning. How are we doing this morning? Doing good. Yeah, great, great. Um, Dr. Gopal, let me start with you. What is what is AI in healthcare, and how has it evolved over the years? Well, before I start, good morning again, and thank you for having us, and good morning to your viewers. So AI specifically is just a computer-based model, and what it does, it carries out any sort of human intelligent task, mm -hmm. maybe visual, auditory, or even translation. And as what we're seeing now, it actually moving into decision making, and that's specifically what this conference is about using AI in healthcare industry, in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. Is it currently in use in the industry? Yes, we are moving towards utilizing AI in the healthcare industry. But just to bring it up, we all utilize AI at some point. Um, most patients, mm -hmm. they usually bring up their symptoms and they log it in into Google. <laughs> and the AI comes up with the supposed diagnosis that yeah. it should be. And then they come and they discuss it with the clinician. Well, I think it's this. I think it's that. Mm -hmm. So it is being utilized at some point. But that's other. by the patients. I'm talking about by the doctors. Yes. So we do have some utilization of it. Right. But to the extent that we would like, no. So this is why this conference is mm -hmm. so important. And it's actually going to change the entire landscape in which of how medicine is practiced. So we're going to give the, the opportunity for healthcare workers to attend and get an idea of what is going on on a global scale. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell me who are some of the key speakers uh, and participants attending this conference. Okay, great. So one of, the, one of the speakers we have is Dr. Wayne Frederick. He is from Howard University. He's actually coming to talk about an artificial pancreas and how he utilizes AI to actually secrete insulin from this artificial pancreas. Oh, okay. The other one is Dr. Sebro. Now, when it comes to AI, we have seen advances, one in radiology, genomics, and even pathology. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to highlight the aspect as it relates to radiology. So Dr. Seb Dr. Sebra will be speaking of how we could utilize AI images to come up with AI diagnosis. So that's an important one. We're always speaking about AI and how it could be used in the healthcare industry. Mm -hmm. So we're going to actually see a practical application of AI as it relates to radiology images. We also have Dr. Johnson Foy. Dr. Johnson Foy will be talking about the DAX application. Now, DAX, the DAX application is whereby where we use what we all know as clinicians. After we see a patient, the problem is sitting there and having to write out these long soap forms about seeing the history, et cetera, et cetera. So what the DAX application does, it actually takes the notes from the doctor and transcribe it into a note form. So no longer the medical doctor has to sit there and actually write out the entire notes. So you could, what does that relate to? That relates to actually spending more time with the patient. Yeah. And then last but not least, we have Mr. Lee Fook. Well, he will let you know what he's speaking about, data analytics. So I don't want to yeah. take away the show from him. I, I want to get back to, to one of those points that you made there because I've had, I struggle to understand Dr. handwriting. so I can imagine what the AI is going to do with it. That's a whole different conversation altogether. But Mr. Lifuk, <laughs> let me jump across morning, to you. Morning. Um, what, what inspired you to pursue a, a career in AI? Uh, it was actually completely accidental. Mm. So, so I'm not a tech, I don't have a technical background as per se. I'm not a data scientist, but around 2010, our company was disrupted. And everybody knows you need to use data to make better decisions. Mm -hmm. So as really somebody, you know, as a leader in an organization, that's how I first started on my data journey. Um, by 2010, we'd like, so even, even before that, when we, when we figured out what was happening to our particular market, we realized that, that what we did as an organization, five years from then, it wouldn't exist today. Mm. Why is that relevant to everybody today? Because AI is impacting all of the industries out there. Yeah. So in 2010, we took a hard pivot, and, and what we did, uh, you know, basically met with my, my business partner. I said, Jude, like five years from now, we're dead. But this data thing is, is going to be interesting. Everybody's going to need it. All right. So we took a hard pivot, and um, we established a practice that we grew really from serving small companies just in Trinidad to the regional leaders across the whole Caribbean. 
and then we pivoted into AI because AI is the future. Mm -hmm. So completely accidental. But what, what are some of the key contributions you've made to the field so far? So, so in terms of AI, this year we launched the first AI platform of the Caribbean, which is, is fascinating because we've been sort of the, the, the tail and the big, you know, the, the US, the UK, mm -hmm. Europe, they've been developing these the platforms. Charge, yeah. Yeah. So, so for us, the big challenge for us in the region is that uh, why, why are all these platforms free? It's because they want our data, right? So data sovereignty, privacy, they're all big concerns. Right. So this year we launched the first AI platform. What, what is the platform? So a platform called the Incas Hub. Mm. It's, called, it's a business productivity platform. Okay. All right. And what do you what do you see the role of AI playing in transforming healthcare? So so massive. Uh, well, firstly, like I think the Ministry of, of Health is the second highest funded ministry, but we still have huge waiting lines. We still have patients that need to see well need to access more services. Mm -hmm. So it will reduce waiting lines. It will reduce costs. But more than that, I see it saving lives. Very interesting. I mean, because you say saving lives as mm. a statement, mm. because when you talk about, you know, being able to save time for the doctors, that they spend more time with the patients, I guess that would equate to, to the saving lives that we're talking about yeah. here. Um, all right. So what are some of the key takeaways that you hope the attendees to the conference would be able to leave with? Well, this conference that we have in on November the 26th at Hilton between 9 and 3. As I said, we, we gain it towards healthcare professionals, mm -hmm. we gain it to medical doctors and researchers. But really and truly, the takeaway is to actually come and be, to see the wider audience as it relates to these presenters who are the forefront mm -hmm. of AI and actually see how they could utilize these sorts of solutions in their own practice. What Mr. Lee Fook alluded to was one of the things that AI is doing, and it is actually going to improve accuracy early detection, and in some instances actually provide treatment. So it will no longer be that we think in that what will be AI's role. AI's role is already established. AI's role is actually it is going to augment the entire landscape as it relates to healthcare and actually assist medical doctors in carrying out treatment. What, what, do you need to, what do you believe needs to be the, the focus of the next phase of um, like AI research? The next phase when it comes to AI research, especially, is decision making. And mm -hmm. I think, but it's already, it, as we speak about it now, it's already happening. Yeah. So what is, what is actually ongoing is, and one of the things we need to remember, which I said about in the prelude of the interview, AI is really a computer-based model that relies on human intelligence as well. So the more we input it, is the mm -hmm. more we're going to get out of it. So we're going to see by whereby you go to the medical doctor and the AI might actually be the one coming up with a set of diagnoses and the doctor may be the one sitting with you and deciding, well, this is what you're going to you have or this is me, not what you're going to have. So would we still need to have the balance between the two? Yes, and that, that leads me to another point. I think most people tend to believe that AI is going to displace jobs. Yeah. But I, I don't think so. I think AI, as I said, is actually going to supplement the doctor's visit as well. And really and truly, I think this is another part of the conference. You know, it's also going to be very provocative mm -hmm. and insightful as well. Well, yeah, because you're saying the opposite. You're saying yeah, that I'm the AI gonna, one. Yeah, <laughs> you're, gonna, you're saying AI going to take away the jobs. But how do we, how do we ensure, though, that the AI is, is accurate and reliable when it comes to the diagnosis? Yeah, because so that, that, for me, is a big challenge. When we Google it, we can find out our symptoms that match a bunch <laughs> of things and get diagnosis for all kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah, my wife has gotten dengue about 50 times. Exactly my point. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but ter ter terrific question. In terms, of, in terms of where AI will be, especially in the healthcare space, is that there will always be a human in the middle. All right. There will always be a doctor. You know. So AI, you know, autonomous planes have been a thing for a while, but you always have a pilot there. The same thing is going to happen in, in healthcare because of the impact on human health, human life. So we need to have those doctors there. But AI is going to get better, faster, and it's going to, it's going to be a tool, basically, yeah. for doctors to do their jobs more efficiently. Should we be concerned that, that uh, doctors might get lazy at, at diagnosing or, or inefficient because they depend on the AI? I don't think a doctor will ever become lazy. Let me put that on the, on the right. table. All but right. having said that, what I'm saying is that it would, uh, and I come back to that point, it will actually allow the doctors to focus on other things. So maybe maybe another ailment that you may be able that you came with with a complaint, mm -hmm. and the doctor could actually utilize that time looking at the other ailment. So as I said, it will actually free up efficiency and make it more effective in terms of patient care and actually increasing patient outcomes. 
All right, so if persons want to attend the conference, is it open to the public or is it only for healthcare professionals? No, so it's actually open to the public. Okay. It's free of charge. It's on Tuesday the 26th tomorrow. of Noah, tomorrow, yeah. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And I invite all your viewers to, to come in. They could actually register at www.aiinhealthcarencrha.com. Okay. And there's a registration link there. And I invite them to register and come and, and, and be a part of it. It's happening at Hilton Trinity okay. Conference Center. So it's at the Hilton tomorrow from 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And we can head across to the website to register. AI in healthcare, ncrha.com. Yes, yeah? yes. And we can register to be a part of it. Um, what do you hope people take away from the conference tomorrow, Mr. Uh, Lefouk? I, I think um, if, I, if I could leave one thing with them tomorrow is that AI is inevitable. <laughs> but, but relevance is a choice. Mm. Okay. And that's fair, because people don't realize that we've been using AI in our everyday lives. So when we go on, like you mentioned, Google, but people who have iPhones and they use Siri, or yes. all the other Alexa and all these mm -hmm. other things are all artificial yep. intelligence. And we just look at it as this thing that we can see online where you make a human face or whatever the case is, but it's so many applications. So gentlemen, I thank you very, very much for joining us this morning and for sharing this information. And again, I want to encourage each and every one of you to, uh, if you're interested and if you need to learn more about AI, and it can if you could come not knowing anything about AI, of course, you you're invited. It's, it's a, a fact finding mission. Okay. Yes. All right. So, head on across to Hilton tomorrow from 9 a.m. We'll be getting some more information when it comes to artificial intelligence in healthcare specifically. Gentlemen, thank you again thank for joining you. us. Thanks this for having Do us. enjoy the rest of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Shavin D. Gopal, Head of Public Health and Director of University Services at the NCRHA, as well as Leslie Lee Fook, who's the Director at AI and Analytics at Inca Services. Uh, we take a quick break and we come back with more on the Now Morning Show. Stay tuned.